Hello, this is Jordan, and this video is being recorded on the afternoon of Monday, March 29th, 2021. Thank you for joining me today. Please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you're watching this on YouTube. In this video, I'm going to provide an updated outlook for silver this year. So first, let's take a look at the big picture and uh, look at history and if you follow my work, you know that I love analogs. So here we've plotted the recent move in silver along with all the other historical bullish moves. Uh, it's, it's on the current scale, meaning it's uh, on the scale of where the current move bottomed in terms of the date and the price, and we're using weekly data. And so what we see is that in recent months, silver has been very overbought relative to history. So in that case, uh, you either get some kind of a blow off move or it, or it comes back to a more reasonable level. And that's what's happening. Uh, silver is, is correcting and consolidating. Uh, I think it's likely to move lower and uh, test that recent low from a couple months ago. And so it'll be coming back to the pack closer to history. And we're looking at not all history. We're looking at the history of very, very strong moves. So uh, with that said, you know, these four big moves, uh, I think the average of where they peaked out is around $70 on the current scale. You know, the one that the one from 1980, I think it peaked at 130. I just had to, I, I had to cut that off on the chart. You know, otherwise it would have been hard to view the other ones. And so the, the median of those four is also around $60. Now, looking at, you know, how potentially how high silver could go in this cycle, it does have major, major resistance at $50. We all know it's very significant. And if silver gets a clean breakout past that, you have a measured upside target of uh, potentially, I think, 95 or 96. And if we're looking at um, the recent low from 2020, then the measured upside target for that would be, I think, close to 90. Uh, so anyways, if silver can make a clean, sustained, big breakout above 50, then it does have potential to get up to $90. Now, gold has a clear measured upside target of 3,000. So that would, that would imply a gold-silver ratio in the 30s. Um, now, gold technically will look super bullish when it breaks above 2070 or 2100. Uh, the the long term chart, I mean, the long, very long term multi decade charts for both gold and silver, they're really, really bullish. And so, the, what I'm getting at is the measured upside target for gold is 3,000. However, it, it, the gold breaking out from this cup and handle pattern. Um, it, it's such a bullish pattern that it that it it's not unreasonable to think that on that breakout move it could go to you know maybe thirty five hundred or even four thousand and so in that case it's more reasonable to think silver could get up to ninety. Now I'm babbling on here and getting way above the near term. The near term outlook for this year is at least for you know over the next couple months silver needs to correct. It needs it to, to to get to a lower level because it's so overbought relative to even bullish history. Uh, so that's the near term, medium term outlook. However, for the cycle, you know, we're looking out over the next two, three, potentially four years, those numbers that I just said, that's potentially where silver could go. Now, zooming back in on the short term, because that's what we all care about. Let's take a look at the last bull market and the bullish consolidations that silver had. And so what I'm getting at is look at the end of those corrections and consolidations. Look at the three arrows. We have the two blue arrows there. Uh, we also have the black arrow uh, from which is at the uh, beginning of 2010. Um, so here we're also looking at the 400 day moving average that's in red. And then we have the 200 day Bollinger bands, which are in blue. And if you look at the, those, the end of those corrections and consolidations, the first two, those two blue arrows, you can see how they, the first one came down, you know, a little bit below the 400 day, nearly touched the lower 200 day band. The one in 2007, you know, it was kind of a spike low. 
uh, it went below both. Uh, and then if we look at the last one, you know, that was a very bullish uh, correction, a very bullish consolidation where uh, silver came down at the beginning of 2010. It almost tested the 400 day, but not quite. So um, the the two the, the first two are, are a better case for what we're looking at now. But my point is we can look at what happened here and apply that to the current market and think that it's very possible that silver can come down and test the 400 day and even the lower 200 day band. So this is a, a look at where we are here and now uh, with the 400 day moving average and the lower 200 day Bollinger band. I should have made them different colors, but I'm sorry, they're the same. But the two red arrows show where they are right now. And we can see the 400 day moving average is it's rising. It's just inches below 21. We could call it $21, but in the next couple months, you know, that should probably go above 21, maybe get up to 2150 or so. Now the lower 200 day Bollinger band is currently at $19, but that's screaming higher as you can see. So it looks to me like those two levels of support will probably come into play uh, around $21. And so, you know, d dating back, I mean, historically, that's also an area of very, very strong support. Uh, if we're looking at, you know, I didn't do Fibonacci retracements, but if we're looking at uh, the low from 11 up to, you know, 30 plus dollars, you know, that comes pretty close, I think, to 21. So 21, uh, that's an area of very, very strong support. And I just sketched out there potentially, you know, what we m might see happen over the next couple months. I mean, it's not a forecast or something you should trade on, but given history, given the recent price action in silver, I mean, the silver stocks, I should have done a slide on them, but they've really been lagging silver. They've been underperforming. I mean, they're telegraphing a move that they're telegraphing that silver is going to go lower and probably test 21 or 22. So that's the, uh, th that's the near term outlook here. And I've, and, uh, you know, I've been cautious on silver for months. Uh, but with that said, you know, we could be setting up for a time where you want to get back into silver stocks over the next couple months. And last thing uh, in blue, that's the nominal net spec position in silver. And so the last reading was 49,000 contracts. That was with silver around 25 bucks. So what happens if silver declines 15% or so, comes down to 22, $21, you're going to see more speculators sell. I mean, they're the ones driving it lower anyway. So that reading could come to, maybe it comes down to, to 30,000 contracts and, you know, that could be the lowest in, in you know, two or three years. I'd have to check back. Uh, but again, we're looking at what could come about over the next couple months is you have silver could come down to very strong support there in the low twenties at the same time. Uh, the sentiment indicators could also be very encouraging. Uh, case in point, the net spec position, that could come down and get to a very low level. So, you know, long story short, there's still downside in silver over the short term. But, you know, I think at some point this spring, you know, before the end of spring, we're probably, we, we potentially could see an important low in silver and then we could see a rebound and this, uh, you know, bullish consolidation could continue. I hope you enjoyed this video. You can follow all my work at thedailygold.com. Uh, also on my YouTube channel here. Uh, let me know what you think. Leave a comment. And uh, thank you again. I appreciate you following my work. And I look forward to publishing another video for you guys in the days and weeks ahead. Thank you.